Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari 8-bit games, some which I grew up with and some which are new to me. Today is one of the latter. Today we're looking at Dark Chambers, which was a 1988 release from Atari Corporation, developed by Chuck Peavy of Sculptured Software. And there's actually uh, an interesting little story behind the release of this game. Um, basically, this game exists because of a legal dispute uh, between John Palevich, the creator of Dandy, which we looked at uh, very early in the Atari A to Z series, and um, Atari Games, who made Gauntlet. Now, Palevich believed that uh, when Ed Logg and company made Gauntlet, they basically pinched what he did for Dandy. And although the two aren't exactly the same, it's sort of easy to see why he'd think that, because Dandy had four-player dungeon crawling, Gauntlet had four-player dungeon crawling, picking up food, picking up bombs, unlocking doors with keys and so on. I mean, this is all stuff we take for granted in games today, but the, the similarities between Dandy and Gauntlet were very obvious. And Palevich thought he should at least get some credit for what he did on Gauntlet. So eventually he and Atari settled out of court on that, um, a process which allegedly involved Palevich being awarded a, um, a free Gauntlet arcade machine, which would have probably been enough to shut anyone up in about 1985 or so. But what happened then is that um, Palevich worked with uh, Atari and Sculptured Software to create this game. Uh, called Dark Chambers, which came out on Atari 2600, Atari 7800, and Atari 8-bit. So this is the Atari 8-bit version, which is very similar to the Atari 7800 version. It doesn't move quite as smoothly as the Atari 7800 version, but it looks very similar. Um, the Atari 2600 version is quite different. Um, but yeah, the 8-bit and the, and the 7800 versions are quite similar. So let's hit start and have a go. So we've got beginner, standard, or advanced mode. And we can play in one or two player mode and it's simultaneous two player in this as well uh, which is nice so let's just go for standard entering level a and off we go so unlike gauntlet there's no sort of character classes to choose or anything in this one you just you just either player one or player two and you explore the dungeon with eight directional movement and you shoot monsters. And you'll notice that as you shoot these monsters, they're actually changing form. So this is this is sort of how um, one sort of distinctive feature between Dark Chambers and Gauntlet is that the monsters have sort of tiers. And as you just draw one tier of monster, it, the, the, the monster goes down to the next tier. So it sort of goes through ghost and zombie and goblin and all that sort of thing. So the more powerful monsters, you basically have to defeat more times in succession before they're finally destroyed. And the same for their generators there. So there you see ghost turns to skeleton, turns to whatever that thing is. Right, we've got a gun there, which I believe... It does something to our shots. I can't remember what. Because there's also a sword you can get. Which I think makes your shots more powerful. So we get that key. And use that to unlock this gate here. Get the treasure for some points. Get the sword. There's also a shield you can get, I think. Which means you take less damage from enemies. And so as long as you've got all of those... Uh, then you'll be fully upgraded and ready to kick some bottom. So your aim on each level is simply to find the exit, uh, which is the ladder pointing downwards. So that's fairly straightforward to do, but along the way, if you want to score some more points, then you can defeat some monsters and preferably take out their generators as well. So again, just, just like in Gauntlet, monsters come from generators, you can destroy those generators, and that stops more monsters from appearing. But of course, inevitably, those generators are surrounded by monsters. Which can make it a little bit tricky to take them all out. You see, I've taken a fair amount of damage there. Health is the green bar on the left, obviously. Uh, 
but yeah you can see you can see the effect of the power-ups i've got whereas it was taking several shots to destroy an enemy before it now takes just one to to knock them down a tier all right on to level b and we just proceed from here as you might expect So yeah, unsurprisingly, there's a very gauntlet feel to this game. Um, the level designs are very, very gauntlet. But a lot of people prefer this game to the uh, to the Atari 8-bit conversion of gauntlet. Because this, this looks a little bit nicer, it runs a little bit better. Um, it doesn't have all the disc loading. It doesn't take 37 minutes to load from tape. Well, I don't know, actually, because I never loaded this from tape, but I've certainly never heard anyone complaining about uh, loading dark chambers from tape. That heart there, I'm not 100% sure what that does. I think it might be for when you're playing co-op. I believe if you pick up the heart, it will resurrect the other player, possibly. Because it doesn't do anything when you touch it by yourself, but you can, you can shoot it. And then that makes that hole appear, which I think the other player can clamber out of if they're dead. Uh, but as you can see, it also releases monsters as well. So bear that in mind. <laughs> uh, we're low on health again. Yeah, I, I wasn't familiar in the, with this game until relatively recently. Um, originally, I sort of heard a bit about it when I was looking at Dandy uh, back in 2018 when we first started the Atari A to Z series. And subsequently, um, I had the chance to play the 2600 version a bit uh, because it's on one of the Atari collections for the Evercade. Uh, so that, like I say, that is the Atari 2600 version, which is actually quite different from this in some ways. It's still got the same basic mechanics. So you shoot monsters, you shoot generators, uh, collect keys and all that sort of thing. But the, the sort of design of it is very different. It's got more, uh, rather than being a, a free scrolling level like this, the Atari 2600 version is divided into screens, a bit more like adventure. And so that gives it a lot more feel of sort of having navigation puzzles i guess you'd call them because uh the levels wrap around and that sort of thing so in many cases getting through the levels on the 2600 version um involves getting your head around that wraparound system and figuring out how to get to places that you might be able to see initially but not necessarily get to see you later <laughs> right level c Is that food or is that going to kill me? The X suggests it might kill me, but also there were things in Gauntlet that looked like that that were good. Let's see what happens. No, nope, it kills me. Good. That's what I wanted to happen. It's all right. We're fine. There's some there's some food down here. There's a nice bit of chicken and cheese. Cheese! Chicken! Heavy machine gun! I'm gonna bomb. How do you use that, I wonder? I guess we'll find out. We press the 1 key for player 1. And presumably player 2 presses 2 for player 2's bombs.
And you see that there's more of those power-ups scattered around, so just in case you miss the ones on the first level. Or presumably, if you're playing in two-player, only one person could pick up those power-ups. So you either want to give them all to one person or split them between you, and then as you progress through the rest of the game... Ooh, excuse me, itchy nose. Um, you make sure that both players have got all of the power-ups. It's quiet. Too quiet, I tell you. Motorbike morons are out in force again, I hear. How lovely it is to live in a city. Alright, how do we get over here? Because there was some stuff over here. Oh, the exit's there as well. Treasure! Food. More food. Down to level D. This is one of those games I suspect was, is probably actually harder with two players. <laughs> Just because you'll be getting in each other's way and stealing all the treasure and yelling at each other. But that's why these games are truly fun, of course. Fond memories of playing Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance cooperatively with my friend Sam. And we were constantly shouting at each other over who was stealing all the treasure. Because the answer was both. Both of us were stealing all the treasure. Did you know, incidentally, this isn't relevant to this game, but did you know that the engine for Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance was so good that um, it rendered every individual gold piece in the piles of gold that you could pick up? So if there was a pile of gold that said, there's 12 gold here, there would be 12 gold pieces in it. That's very cool. I forget where I read that. I think it might have been in Retro Gamer magazine. A couple of months ago there was a feature on Dark Alliance. Or Baldur's Gate in general, possibly. But yeah, that 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 both that both impressed me and didn't surprise me because I remember Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance being surprisingly impressive for that type of game. Like by the time that came out on PlayStation Two, the sort of top-down isometric hack and slash Diablo style game was not sort of the first place you'd think to look for super impressive graphics and so on but that game did have some lovely sort of physics on its destroyable objects and it had some of the best water i'd ever seen at the time uh, that water effect went on to be uh, licensed to a lot of other people because it was proper sort of real-time water displacement with waves and ripples and that sort of thing and it was just there included in the game for for no real reason other than to look nice and it most certainly did look nice, so... Anyway. No such fanciness here in Dark Chambers. Dark Chambers is a pure, a pure 8-bit experience. For the purists among us. But it is fun. I like this game. It could perhaps do with a little bit more variety because because the one thing gauntlet has over this is is just a little bit more variety in enemies and traps and stuff so gauntlet has things like the um the walls you have to blast through and the teleporters and stuff i mean yes a lot of those features are incredibly annoying like the teleporters in particular are one of gauntlet's worst features um <laughs> But things like the secret walls and stuff, it would have perhaps been nice to see that in this game. But uh, 
you know, I'm not complaining too much. This is this is a solid dungeon crawling shooter map, I guess you'd call it. I need a key for that one. It does what it needs to. It provides some interesting levels for you to explore. It's not just about mindlessly shooting. You can put a certain amount of strategy into what you're doing. And like I say, I bet this is super fun in two-player. So I shall have to try and give it a go sometime if I can convince someone to play it. I would like to play the 7800 version sometime. It's a shame that, um, that that version isn't on either of the Atari collections for Evercade at the moment. But, uh, I mean, there is there is plenty more Atari stuff that they, they haven't covered on the Evercade yet. So perhaps if there's another Atari collection at some point, which I'm sure they will be because Atari love licensing out their old stuff. Um... If there is another Atari collection at some point, hopefully that will be on there. So we'll have to wait and see, though, because with the advent of the uh, of the VS console for Evercade, two-player games like this would be really great. I like the footsteps noise. Reminds me a little bit of Gateway to Apshai, which is a, a thoroughly lovely game that we've previously covered on this series. There's the exit. How do we get there, though, is the question. Now, there's the little tiles there with the crosses on them. Those are traps. So you can, you can just walk straight through them, but you take damage when you do that. So... Um, unless there's anything you really 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 need to get through there like the exit for example um <laughs> you should have to walk through them i don't think there's any way of disarming them either like you can't shoot them so you've just gotta take the fairly substantial hit there is some healing here though there we go This looks like time for a bomb. Oh, a bomb to take out that generator as well. That's useful. All right, making good progress. On to level G. G for... Gonark. Yeah, the, the connections to Dandy in this should be should be fairly apparent. Um, because thinking about it, looking back on it, Dandy also had the sort of tiered monster approach, didn't it? Where you could you'd shoot a monster and it would kind of downgrade its capabilities. I think there's there's more kind of tiers of monster in this than there were in Dandy. They Dandy just had three, if I remember correctly. The one thing that Dandy has that this is lacking, however, uh, is the level creator what word was that the level creator um, because as you may recall a big part of dandy's history was that it was originally designed to be a sort of dungeon master application for networked computers now that never actually came to fruition but what 
the part of that that did remain intact was the fact that in Dandy you could create your own levels for up to four people to play together. Now Dark Chamber sadly does not incorporate such a feature. But it does at least provide a bunch of levels for either the solo or pair of players to enjoy. Ooh, excuse me. Right. Where is the exit? There is the exit. So that looks to me like we need to go up here. And down here. Nicely done. On to level H. This isn't being super difficult so far. I mean, we are only playing on the standard difficulty, but it's, this isn't putting up a ton of a fight just yet. So I don't know how long we're going to last in this, but maybe we should have started on the harder mode. We'll see. Got a nice score, if nothing else. Right. What is all the way over here? I suspect that other key that we saw a minute ago. Yep. One thing that always fascinated me a little bit about the Atari sound chip and sort of old sound chips in general. If you listen to those footsteps, I suspect each of those footsteps was defined with the same um, parameters. But if you listen, there's a slight variation in each one. Just in terms of pitch. And I always found that quite interesting. Because it kind of meant that sound effects didn't necessarily always sound identical. Now I don't know enough about the technicalities of how the sounds are produced with those old sound chips to really tell you why that happens, but... I did always find it interesting and quite satisfying in a strange sort of way. Right, on to level I.
Pew, 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 pew. Let me through. This is a fiddly little maze, isn't it? This feels like a level that would have been in gold lit. In fact, I'm pretty sure there are several levels in gold lit that are exactly like this. <laughs> One key, and what is that? What is, oh, it's a trap. Is it a trap? Yep, it's a trap. It's an exceedingly painful trap as well. Hmm. This game might have suddenly decided to grow a pair. <laughs> Oh, you can shoot the power-ups. Oh, no. That means you can probably shoot the food as well. Green elf shot the food. I'm very low on health. My health is small L. <laughs> but there's the exit. Just need to figure out how to get there. Oh, there's some bread there as well. And there's one door. And there's the other. Little bit of health back. Better than nothing. Level J. J for Jaxi. That's a word that isn't used dearly enough these days. It means bottom, if you're not familiar. So if you're kicking someone right up the jacksy, you're kicking them right up the ass, Don't you know? Oh, thank heavens for diagonal movement in dungeons like this. Oh no! Those are those portals that monsters continually swarm out of that you can't, um, destroy. Just going to have to blast our way through. Will a bomb deal with them? No, it will not. Okay, so we just gotta just gotta fight our way through. Get out of here. Okay, so I think we we found the point that this game gets a little bit harder. <laughs> it's around level I to J. I have triangle health. And I've used all my bombs.
Oh, I need another key. But I don't have another key. The other key's all the way over there. I knew it. I knew it would be an awkwardly roundabout route to get to that key as well. So look, look, there's a key just on the other side of this wall. Wouldn't it be nice if you had that key? But uh, yeah, it would be nice if I had that key. But you're not going to give it up without a fight, are you? No, no, no. Maybe yes. Here we are. All right, everything's fine. Health. Now everything really is fine. All right, let's go use this key. Not that way. This way? No. This way. Ooh, okay, and my ass is starting to go numb, so uh, ooh, we've got a different towel set as well. Yeah, if this looks like going on for too much longer, I might have to call it a day and go and rest my weary buttocks. Oh, oh they are weary. clever. Diablo strats, stand in the doorway. I say Diablo strats, that was originally gauntlet strats. Oh no, there's too many of them. I can't reach the generator. Come on. No, leave me alone. I think this is the end. I think this might be the end. No, no, I'm fighting through. I'm fighting through. I'm fighting through. I'm back where I started. Ow. Ow. We've conquered the sector. Kind of. Alright, run. Run away. Oh, there's loads of those undestroyable generators on this level. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And apparently I have no health. <laughs> oh, and I need that key. I don't have any bombs. And I'm going to die. I cursed myself by saying my ass hurt, didn't I? Never admit to a game that your ass hurts. Oh no, we're dead. Well, there we go. Game over. Anyway, that is Dark Chambers from Atari and Sculptured Software for Atari 8-Bit. Like I say, this is available for Atari 7800 and Atari 2600 as well. The 2600 version is good um, in its own right. It's you know, quite a different feel to this game, but it's well worth checking out in its own right. You can play that two players simultaneous as well, so uh, give it a chance if you can. Anyway, that's enough of that for now. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.